All right. Um, so for the final session, we're just doing uh, an exercise that, um, in which you build a, a network and use all that you have learned, or at least some of it. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, this is a problem that I actually did uh, with um, uh, Owen and Steve uh, a couple of few weeks back. Um, and it's, it's actually based on a real um, court case. And uh, Dave Lanyardo in, in, uh, in London um, analysed this court case. And um, some of the evidence in that case had been, uh, he decided, had been handled uh, badly. Um, uh, I won't actually give you the full problem because I think it will take too long and it's a bit too complicated, but I'll give you the first, the first part of this problem. Dave Lagnato, I mentioned earlier, is one of the UK psychologists that um, does these modelling, uh, does this kind of modelling for, for court cases, legal cases. Um, okay, so these are the kind of instructions um, for the problem. Uh, in, in phase one of the project, the first sort of 18 month phase of the project, um, the problems are constrained in the sense that um, all the information that you're supposed to use um, is in front of you, you know, on the piece of paper or whatever that they give you. Um, so you're not allowed to look up um, stuff on the internet or whatever. And in any case, they try to design the problems um, so that you, it wouldn't help you to have special background knowledge. So instead of making it about a specific country like North Korea, they'll make it about some hypothetical country uh, and so forth because they just want a kind of level playing field for people solving the problems. So they're, they're slightly sort of abstract and they're also slightly fairly short problems, not, you know, not too uh, complex. So, so, so this problem is kind of um, close to the kind of problem that we'll have to solve with our system in phase one. In phase two, uh, the problems get more complex and in phase three, they're actually allowed to do research um, as well, so, um, which, is, which is good. But um, yeah, it says, it says there are two hours available. That, that was for the full problem, so it won't take, it won't take that long for this, this part of the first part of the problem. Um, and the key thing to know then about this problem is that um, the police have in custody suspect X, and they're trying to work out um, what the evidence is um, against X, how likely X is to be, to be guilty. So, um, slide. Okay. I'll read it for you, although you can read. Um, two similar burglaries occur in a small village within a short time span. For both crimes, assume that there is one perpetrator. Um, so we, we know, we can take it as a given that one person committed both crimes. Um, and that there are a thousand potential perpetrators in the village. We're not told how to determine what counts as a potential perpetrator, but again, just take that as a given. Some trace evidence has been found in both cases, evidence one and evidence two. The random match probability for the evidence in case one is 0 0.0002. Um, so that's, uh, what is that, a fifth of? No, sorry, two, two, uh, two hundredth of a percent. Anyway, yeah. Um, and for case two is 0 0.0003. Um, and so what, what is random match probability? It means if you uh, got just some random um, person that didn't commit the crime, what would the probability be that that evidence matched that the, the randomly chosen suspect? Now if, um, assume that there are no errors in the analysis of the evidence, so we're not, we're, not, we're not worried about mishandling of the sample and this sort of thing, which does, which does actually happen with DNA evidence, but in this case we're just going to ignore that. Um, and we assume that um, if it was the offender, so, so in other words, if suspect X was actually the person that committed the crime, then um, it, there's a probability of one of getting a match. So there's absolute certainty it would match if suspect X is actually the one that did it. If suspect X is not the one that did it, then perhaps we can just treat them as like a random person and the probability of getting a match in that case is very low. Okay, so the question at the bottom is what's the value of discovering a match um, in the first and second cases. So uh, the, the evidence, evidence one um, was for case one and the evidence two is for case two. And suppose we did in fact, in both cases, match the suspect. 
the combined power of that evidence, what, what, what then is the value of that um, for, um, against the suspect? So now, what I might do is um, maybe, uh, if it's okay, is to split you into groups of two to discuss um, how to go about building a network that would do the calculations that are necessary and represent the causal structure here correctly and therefore get you the answer that you want to the bottom question. Is there any questions about what the, what the task is? I mean, you can ask later if it's not clear, but... Um, it but we'll go around and help you out. <laughs> yeah, well, what I'd actually like to do is have a go um, and uh, then we'll, we'll come together and we'll discuss what the different um, potential answers are that you've come up with. And in fact, I'll build a sort of consensus model or I'll ask Steve to build a consensus, Stephen to build a consensus model. Um, so it's, it's, it's not that you, this is not being assessed, don't stress, but, we, <laughs> but we'll, it'd be interesting if we get some differences in the way that we build this thing and so forth. So um, can we just pair you two up and you two up and you can share one machine and uh, we've got two and two on this side. Is, other and mm -hmm. the third one is um, mm -hmm. Bitcoin, for example. Uh, yeah. Evidence one and evidence mm -hmm. two. We have two evidences. So the relations are like this, for example. It may happen. The evidence works for you in private. So, so basically, we have the suspect. There we have yes, yes. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. What, yeah. what happens. Yeah. This one evidence. is caused by uh, evidence yeah. one. So, you've got the Aragon one? So three is the second case. Yes. And this caused is no by this. And it, is no, no. It, it is affecting this one. Mm -hmm. It is affecting mm -hmm. this one. Yes. I don't know if we have three different so parameters here. We have a person here. Yeah. Guilty twice. So, yeah, we have three other, yeah. Oh, two hours on one of the two. Mm -hmm. so it's it's guilty twice. Two 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure 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 yeah, then I think so the trial yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so yes, yes. If it's yes, yes, then you have the same. Then, then this is going to basically one. If it's guilty twice. The next. No, you be one. Well, already they have told that match in case one is this. Match in case two is this. So, so you have to. Yes. So. Yes, it's a little bit confusing. Have you guys, before you get too bogged down in the problem and stuff like that, have you decided on what variables you want to put in your Bayesian network? No, no, actually the question, the question is a little bit confusing. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah but a little bit explain the scenario in more simple words. So you basically need we have what happens when you have both evidence one and evidence two? Is this is the one we have. Okay, so we need to do multiplication. So we have like a small amount of evidence. We are certain. 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 No, don't think about causal direction. I want, I'll just leave it as it is. I want, I want to, leave it as it is, but yeah. <laughs> I want to... Uh, Sorry. I want to... Uh, oh, okay. Yep, stop, yeah. stop. No editing. <laughs> I, want to, I, want to, I want to see it as it is. I, I, both of them went the wrong way, so I had the full that's CPT going. Yeah. Okay, that's all right. So just, I, just, I had, just, to, do, I had yeah. to do the work with the software. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Defeating the purpose of having the software. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So here, this is where... Sorry, what? I'm on a, I'm on a short leash here. Yeah. 
Yeah, ideally we want to know what the combined effect of having having the two pieces of evidence is, like evidence one and evidence two. So, so the fact that there's a match for the first crime and there's a match for the second crime. Yeah. Sure. 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 Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. This is the priority. Are you building something else? Are you building something else? Probably. I want to see the original one that you had. Oh, oh yeah, the original one, was, well, that, that was uh, uh, pretty much what I described. Um, actually, the very first one was, was misread, misunderstood, you know, yeah, that's a comprehension right. issue. Where yeah. I had evidence one and case one, evidence two and case two, but then they assumed there is one perpetrator. So, so there's a right. one perpetrator. So, that's so there's yeah. guilt and not guilt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and there was confusion at the start about, so which one, evidence evidence one for crime one, like, mm. evidence one sure. has that confusion for crime one, and what for crime two, but they're both, sure. this, is, this is for both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then we had the arrows going the other way, so we had yeah. this four, uh, four by four CPT, or, yeah. or a big one anyway, which... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. sure, sure, sure. You could do that, but that's not what we ask us the question as. So, yeah. so who needs more time? Can we can we uh, can we have a? Um, I mean, you you, these two groups are okay. Uh, yeah, let's 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 um, even if you haven't uh, finished your satisfaction, let's um, put the results together. Um, so briefly. Um, Stop working. Brief, briefly, the um, uh, just a sort of comment on the process we're using here socially. So the so the, the Delphi um, process is just a kind of standard way of organising a group um, work on a task like this. So and the basic idea is just that you split people into smaller units. In this case, pairs. I mean, it could be just individuals, and they do some work on the same task. And so that stops. Uh, like if we had all done this together in a group of eight then you probably would have got sort of two people doing most 80% of the work and another two people contributing 15% and then the last four people contributing, you know, very little. Um, partly because it's only one person could speak at once. I mean, it's not necessarily... But then also just because the ones that are more confident will come forward and do more of the work. Now, in the Delphi process you, is, is designed... One of the advantages is to kind of get ev give everyone a chance and uh, an obligation to actually do some work, you see, so that we get... We get um, in this case, uh, four sort of independent attempts at it. Um, and if there, are, if there are kind of, if you're talking about like a brainstorming type of scenario, then of course you've got four independent chances to think of like original things and we, we don't just have like one group dominating the discussion. But then of course we bring it back together uh, to try to get a kind of consensus um, answer. Now, the way I've done it here actually, I asked you to build the whole um, there's two stages to this problem, but for the st first stage I asked you to actually build the whole network, variables, arcs, put in the values, make the calculation. So if it was a pure Delphi thing, we'd now um, look at all your whole models and discuss the advantages, but instead, and for the next um, one, we will actually break it up into stages. So we'll do variables first, then we'll do, you know, uh, the arcs, and then we'll do so forth. Um, and in fact, in taking this, in, in building the consensus model, I'll do it in stages right now. Um, so, the question then first, uh, and this is kind of roughly um, the workflow that we have anticipated in the in the in the system, um, uh, because it's you can imagine it's hard in some problems if, if you get everyone to build their, an entire model and then then you've got a sea of models and you're trying to work out what the discuss what the correct model is. It's easier if you can reach agreement, you know, on the variables. Okay, now we can reach agreement on the arcs and so. On. Okay, so so what variables did you use? What variables did you think you wanted to use? Initially, Great. the variables um, we were going to use uh, were a bit wrong because they were based on... Oh, excuses, excuses. What variables have you actually <laughs> used? Oh, uh, well, I, I since corrected it, so it's yeah. okay, so okay. interesting. In the end, uh, the probability uh, that... Um, so you have... Sorry, I can see on your screen. You have guilt? 
Yes. Yes, which is which is kind of the main node of interest. That's right. Yep. And then two other nodes which are just evidence one and evidence two. Yes. Good. Um, what variables did you have? Uh, so suspect or? Yep. If it's good channel. Yeah. And evidence one, evidence two, and the match. Yes. Okay. So so basically three three nodes and. Um, so in, in with that variable, um, oh sorry, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, we have the same thing. We have the both nodes above the evidence. Yep, and okay. these guys. Yeah, really on both nodes of many criminal crimes. So um, evidence in innocent. Yep. Innocent yep. and guilty. Is there the evidence for criminal? Yep. So how many? Three, three four. How many? Yeah. How many? Four. 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 So, 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 so these guys also yeah. took a little yeah. bit of a different thing. From yeah. the question, what's the value of discovering a match in the first and second cases? Yes. That wasn't really obvious, and I don't think it's obvious either. Yes, yes. Either no. What that is. That's so right. We'll get to that. We're actually putting a utility node to actually try to work out the value of what. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. So that was another variable. Good. Like yep. Yep. Mm. Yep. So, um, I'll just. Uh, I could make a couple of comments that you can see and uh, that you think about for the differences here. Um, f first of all, you've been very efficient by putting in basically three nodes. Now, it's possible to put in more nodes and it wouldn't be wrong. Okay, so, so for example, um, it's a given in this problem that it's the same person committing crime one and crime two. Um, so the, there isn't much point in having, um, you know, did X commit crime one, did X commit crime two, uh, did X commit both crimes as a, as a node that depends on those two and so, so on. But you could do that. It wouldn't be wrong to do that and it should give you the same answer, right? So, so that illustrates one thing about modelling, that there are choices you can make that aren't wrong. There, there, there are several models that you can make of the same situation, greater or lesser detail, um, depending on what you think is necessary or what's, or what's clearest to you to do. And another thing, um, so uh, you, you know, Jeff, you had, um, is, no, you had, um, what was it, suspect X, and what were the values of that node? Uh, guilty and not guilty. Guilty and not guilty, indeed. And what, were and what you had guilty yeah. as the node, and then what yes. were the values? Um, yeah. <laughs> There's a bit of confusion. Also guilty and not guilty, but I, the more but I could have been. It, it's confusing. Yes, but if the node is guilty, or is, guil is, is suspect X guilty, then the, then the values should be? Yes or no. Yes or no. Should be true or false. Right. Right. So now neither of the, both of those things are perfectly okay. So one, so one of them, one of them was you rep, the node represents the proposition that suspect X is guilty, and then that could be true or false or yes or no. And the other one is, um, you know, about suspect X, uh, do they have the property of being guilty or being not guilty? Now that's that's fine, and you get the same answer. So again, there are just choices about what you about how you represent the situation. Yeah. I was just thinking the fact that it's about suspect X, like a random. Mm. Not a specific person. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think we're happy um, then. Well, let's have um, let's have uh, suspect X is guilty as the as the proposition, okay. and we'll make it true and false as the values. And then um, um, about evidence one, I guess the values were match dot not match. So we'll have evidence one match not match, and evidence two oh, match, match not match. match. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we could again. We could have evidence one matches true false, but um, let's let's do evidence one match not match. That's in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Trusty assistant Steve will build it as I have described it. So, so um, actually, Steve, can you put that? Um, you can name it that, but can you can you transfer that to the title? Copy that across to the title and put spaces. So the title actually, this is one of these cl clunky things in the software that the 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 name doesn't uh, can't start with a number and it has to n have no spaces. You can you can have underscores, but you can't have spaces. It's typical, you know. Oh, does it? Uh, okay, maybe the new version. I, I, I'm sure I've got a version that displays the underscores. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Maybe you do. Uh, 
this is something that's common that across all the different um, BM tools as well. So they have like a node identifier, which is like yeah. a programming variable name, and that's got certain um, uh, rules applied to it. Um, but title could be a free text. We can write whatever we want into the title. It doesn't have to be meaningful. Yeah. And, 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 and something which. Um, I mean, we might come across as we're doing this problem, but, but, but I certainly find from experience in argument mapping and also experience in modeling, there's sort of an optimal length for the, length for the name of the variable. If you make it too short, it's not obvious looking at it what it represents. If you make it too long, it's sort of too hard to read. So, so, so suspect X is guilty is, is about the right length, whereas, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. When does the name ever get used? When does the name ever get used in Medica? Um, uh, well, you can actually change the view of it. So after Stephen's um, finished writing these out, I'll show you. Yeah, so you can, you can have the name show or the title show. But, you but can it's have okay, but if that's the only thing that it's useful, it's useful to have uh, Yeah, look, look, you can... Well, if you're, using, if you're using the programming interface, it's very important. It's basically like it's basically you're going to have a concise variable name is the title, so you know evidence. Um, but Netica requires it because I can have two nodes there. I can call evidence one and evidence two the same thing, but the node names have to be different. Yeah. So the underlying so node name is title. It, title. The person who's actually using the network doesn't have to be the same thing. Why is it the same title? If you were to, to make things difficult and tricky for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well something, sometimes what can happen is that you want to build um, two alternate um, models of the same situation oh, okay. and if you want to have them in the same file then, then you'll have to um, have something to distinguish. Um, no, it's reasonable. It, it, it's, just, it's just, I mean the other way to do it is just have two different files and switch between views. But Yeah, so, so, so it's cases where you have, you know, lots of observations of the same kind or whatever, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, so it's it. Anyway, so it, it gives you that flexibility. Um, okay, sorry, so, the, so we've, we've, we've built the um, variables and their values. Um, and I, I won't... Um, I won't sort of labour defining the variables. I think it's pretty clear what they mean, so I won't. But in some cases, you might put a bit more effort into actually specifying what, what, what these variables actually mean. Um, uh, so let's uh, go for arcs or arrows, OK? Um, what arrows did you have in? What would Initially, uh, we had arrows going from evidence one to suspect is guilty, and evidence two to suspect X is guilty. Okay, so we have our, so we have prop, we have arrows from um, the evidence nodes to, to, to the guilt node. Um, what arrows did you have? Okay, what arrows did you have? Yeah, between between these. Um, uh, oh, s sorry, Steve, we haven't agreed on this yet, but this. this Oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. Show you what show what these these guys had. Um, and you, you had this also, yep, yep. And and you? The same as this, okay. And the other direction. Okay, so so of the pairs, we have three we have three pairs in this way, and and one pair had it the other way around. Now. Let, let me ask you if you remember me saying this. Build a causal model of the situation. Do you remember me saying that? Now, do, do, if, if, if suspect X is guilty, guilty is, it, is, it, is it the fact that suspect X committed the crime that is going to affect whether the evidence matches X? Or is it the fact that the evidence matches X that's going to determine whether suspect X committed the crime? Right, so the bottom one. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because so so it's this now this illustrates a couple of things. First, we need to be clear about the semantic interpretation of suspect is guilty. If you thought that meant what will make me think suspect X is guilty, then yes, the evidence makes me think suspect X is guilty. But if you think that means um, you know suspect X committed the crime then it's the committing of the crime that then leaves this trail of evidence and then it causes the evidence to be a match with X. 
So they actually causally speaking, and that was the intended interpretation, so, so, so causally speaking the bottom one is correct. And what this will mean is that you will find that those numbers, sorry, <laughs> the numbers I gave you in the problem are a lot easier to fit into the bottom one, right, for a couple of reasons. I mean when you, when you, when you test, yeah. Um, yeah. When, you, when you design a, a forensics test, right, you, 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 you find out, you know, if, if they're the real person, you know, what's the probability that I get a positive result? If they're just a, uh, some random person, what's the probability that I get the positive result? You don't, you don't test it the other way around where you get people coming in, you find out you have a positive result, and then you try and ask them whether they were guilty or not. <laughs> like that, that's, that, because, then, because then that depends on the base rate. It depends on the, on the number of people that were guilty, the number of people that weren't guilty. It, it's, it's, it's a difficult way to work it out. So, so, this, so the causal direction is the way that you tend to um, test things scientifically and, and, uh, and that's why the figures are usually given this way, to, right? And, and, um, and, and for a lot of uh, other situations, the causal figures are the ones that are easiest to think about. So th yep. this is one of the reasons yep. for having the causal directions um, as being the way that you make the model, is that those are the numbers that you're more likely to have access to. And, and another reason is, and we will, we'll, another reason is, these two structures have completely uh, different probabilistic um, uh, possibilities. So, so the, the top one is what we call a collision, and and that means that depending on the evidence, the two things uh, on the top, the, the bottom thing can have any any distribution at all, and they and they can interact in a certain way. So, for example, in the top one, you can have hypothetically you could have if evidence one matches and evidence two matches he's not guilty if evidence one matches and evidence two doesn't match he's guilty if evidence two matches and evidence one doesn't so, so you can have any inter, uh, an XOR interaction there right if you it, but the bottom one does not allow an XOR structure that's a different probabilistic structure so um, technically the effect of the evidence on suspect X is two independent likelihood ratios multiplied together uh, you don't have to understand that necessarily, but that, that, that is actually the probabilistic um, relationship between those two evidence items. So if I ask someone to give me the causal structure, they don't know what two independent likelihood ratios multiplied together is, and they don't know what an XOR is, let's say, but the information that they gave me tells me how to combine the evidence probabilistically. So this is the other key or another very important reason why we prefer causal structures to non-causal structures when we're eliciting and combining the evidence because in the causal information, information is implicit um, probabilistic independence information. Yeah? So um, this point is uh, not appreciated by a lot of people. Um, so there are people out there who've tried to use Bayesian networks to, to model arguments but they've just tried to model the argument structure. And in an argument structure you'd tend to do what it did on the top. All the arrows would point towards the conclusion. This is how argument mapping works. All the arrows would point towards the conclusion and you'd think, oh, this looks right, I just need to enter the probabilities. And then you'd be thinking, oh, geez, these probabilities are pretty hard to think about. And <laughs> of course they are. And, 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 and then you'd have a real problem getting the right dependency relationships between the items. So, so uh, one of the distinctive things about, um, and this is something I realized when I was moving from argument mapping to uh, Bayesian networks. I, I started off with the top model I thought, oh, I'll just do a probabilistic version of the same structure. And then I started to realise that this is not, this is for the reasons I mentioned, this is not very good at all. So, so I realised that almost always it should be causal. Um, and, and, and as I said, there are, there are groups out there who haven't come to that realisation yet. So, so one of the distinctive things about our proposal, I think, um, for this CREATE project was that we emphasised why you would want it causal and the fact that causal is the way to go. So having said that, um, Shall we? Well, let's. Shall we try and parameterize the bottom one? I guess. Yeah. Do you want to leave the top one? Uh, no, no. Let's leave it there for a minute. Um, so the bottom one. How do we plug in the numbers? Uh, uh, yes. So where, where, what are our numbers? Point zero 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 two was what the probability of. Yeah. Okay. So let's 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 go through these cells one at a time. And. Uh, you know, it can be a bit of work here, but you need to keep straight what, what you're being asked. So the first cell, um, if suspect X, X is guilty, right, um, what is the probability of a match? Okay, so we put... Oh, sorry, 
one. Yeah, one or 100%. Oh, no, this is 100%. It's in, it's in, it's in, it's in, there's two different it's settings. It's, you can set it to probabilities or you can set it to, uh, so in fact, let's set it to probabilities because the um, in figures we were given were probabilities. Why, yep. why isn't it 0.9998, like the, the random match? The question is sort of, it's regardless of the information is random. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So that's one oh, one and two. Quickly show the question. Yeah, yeah. Maybe go back to the question. Just like a paper. Yeah, I keep I keep pointing to this screen as no, if it, as if it's still there, but <laughs> it's not. So so um, the random match probability for the evidence that could be uh, bigger if you just uh, control and scroll. Yeah. So um, the random match probability for the evidence in case one is point zero 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 two. That so that's. Um, uh, explained as the probability that a random suspect um, you would get a match. So you have su the suspect is not guilty, in other words, but you get a but you get a match. So that's point zero 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 two. False positive. Yeah, false positive. It's, exactly. It's equivalent to this, this number here, right? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So going back to the um, going back to the uh, the bottom gra uh, graph. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, going back to the bottom, um, you can see that that's what we're being asked. So if suspect X is not guilty, so, so suspect X guilty is false, then what's the probability of a match? Zero, zero, zero. Three. Oh, this is evidence two, yeah. So it's zero, 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 three uh, for this one. And then the, the complement of that for the other square, right? Now, part of what's going on, though, remember, notice is that, um, yeah. So we have to we have to kind of assume that if suspect X is not guilty, then it's like, uh, you, you know, it, then it, it is the random match probability. You have to understand what random match probability means. That that means right. Um, okay, that's so that's fine. Um, have we finished with the bottom model? Uh, yeah, we discussed that. So that's that. It's assumed that if suspect X is guilty, there will be definitely be a match. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Um, well, we actually we haven't filled in evidence one, have we? So we have to do the same thing for evidence one, but using point zero 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 two. And when Steve has done that, um, no, that should be zero 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 two. Yeah. And when Steve has done that. Uh, are we done? I hear clicking. I don't hear. It's on. It's on now. I think the green light's on. Ah, okay. We're back. Or is okay. Right. Um, are we done? No. No. What numbers are we missing? One for suspect X is guilty. What numbers did you have in there? Actually, how about pressing the little excitement button up the top and we'll see what happens to the bottom model. Excitement button. What, um, and now, now let's enter um, match for evidence one. So we, we observe that it matches and we observe that evidence two matches as well. And we get um, a very, very high probability uh, according to this, of suspect X being guilty. So high that they've rounded it to 100 versus zero. The little plus says, there's a tiny little epsilon there. But Is that model correct for calculating the probability of guilt? Uh, yes. Why not? Uh, because there is a 50-50% chance that a person is guilty. Yes. It's one in a thousand. And it should be one in a thousand. Right, exactly. Did you get that? So that's like the problems you saw before where you get a positive test result for the, for the cancer, 
but the probability that you actually had the cancer was very low. So the probability that, that, that um, your positive result was actually a false positive is quite high because there's like a thousand people that didn't have it that got a false positive and one that did have it that got a true positive. So, so we need what the base rates or the, or the prior probability of uh, suspect X being guilty before we entered the evidence. And we need that to sort of calculate the, 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 the total probability of suspect X being guilty, um, which we think is 1,000 uh, to 1, basically, or 999 to 1. Well, won't make much difference. 1 in 1,000, yep. Good. Okay. So now, when we um, enter the evidence, uh, you can see that it's, it's still um, very, very high, but the false, it's no, it no, longer, no longer says zero plus, which is a really, really tiny number. It's now um, 0 0.006, so it's nearly uh, about half a percent, right? So um, we do need the prior probabilities in there. And just, just for um, an exercise, uh, let's try and fill in um, the top one. So uh, let me see. So th the probability, let's should we start at the top. So the evidence one is a match or not a match. So what, what was the probability of that? Is that where you use the point zero zero two? Point zero zero two. Yeah. Point zero zero two. Yeah. So now I'm this is this is I'm asking what you actually used. So three groups out of four had this model, so you must have used some numbers. I think they started to and then we got that. Yeah. So, so, so if we do put in that number, what, what does that actually represent? Does it represent the probability that, that evidence one will match? It doesn't represent anything. Not match. We don't have that information. Well, that is information you've got. But, what, but what, am, what am I actually representing with node evidence 1 by the point zero zero two and the point nine nine eight? Given that we don't know yet whether it's guilt, yes. yes. Um, does the probability of match, is that not just the same as the probability of match as anybody in the top row? Because we don't know if it's guilt or not yet. Right. But in the bottom, in the bottom model, what we did was we had um, the probability that they're just a random person like the 999 and then we were able to say the probability that it would match in that case and then we had the one in a thousand that they're guilty and we were able to enter the probability that it matched in that case so we were able to enter either case now what are we entering at the top what case which case which case is that is that the case where the person is guilty what are the, is that the probability that the evidence will match when they're guilty oh we do know What's that? Guilty or not guilty. So, so like, it, uh, regardless. Well, we used these figures before, right? So, so we used them down here for evidence one. Point zero zero two was the probability of a match when. Oh, when, he's not when he's not guilty. guilty. That's what we did down here. So, what that we are actually representing up there is the probability of the evidence matching when they're not guilty. Mm. It's it, it, point zero 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 two. two, right? But so that's not the overall probability of a match because we have totally ignoring the case when they are guilty. Whereas here we're taking an average of the two, whereas there we're just putting in one. Yeah. Okay. And let's go down to, to, to what the um, table looks like at suspect X is guilty, assuming that that's the way we entered the top, top two. Um, now what do we put here? So the probability that suspect X is guilty um, given that both match. How'd you get that? You can read it. Well, <laughs> you read it off the other graph. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, would you? Well, because we know that if it matches, it's guilty. That's the probability. It's, it's, it's 0 0.994. That's the probability. Um, no, I think we should, they're probabilities. No, the belief bars are our percentage probabilities. Yeah, 100. Oh, sorry, yeah, they're percentages, are they? Okay, so anyway, that, 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 those are the true probabilities, right? So how did we, how can we work out what to write in those boxes? 
network. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you, you have to, <laughs> and in fact, Greg said that, that he actually did the calculation by hand yes. in order to fill in the <laughs> thing, which is possible, right? If you know what you're doing. But, but you know, if you've correctly managed to work out the interpretation and, and then you think, okay, I can't enter it from the data, I have to work it out from the data. But then you're doing exactly the task that the network is supposed to be doing for you, right? So, um, and I don't want to digress on this, but because I have emphasized causal networks, it, it, is, it is possible there are some scenarios where you're actually given the figures the other way around. So, you know, there's some scenarios where you might want to build an anti-causal network because that's the way around that you got the figures. So it's, it's, I don't want to be, you know, completely black and white about this, but as a rule, right, the, 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 the figures are more natural to think about and to get and whatever in the causal direction. Um, good. So, so far, um, everyone who had that with all figures gets an apple. And I don't think it's anyone, is it? Because you had the right structure, but you hadn't quite filled it in, right? And nobody else had the right structure. Well, this time there, but Oh, you had the right structure too? I thought it was just one in the... Okay. Okay, great. Okay, oh, you an apple. Um, now let's move on to the second half of the problem, which we have time for, I think. Okay. So now it gets... Um, what we're doing here, actually, and, and I, I, I'll, I'll just... I'll, I'll give you um, a, a tip. Just, just forget about the first graph and start again. Like don't, don't try and build on, don't try and extend this graph, just let's just start again. So, so the, the, what we, what the second thing is actually to break down um, the evidence that we had up here actually into a little bit more fine grained. So what the evidence actually was, was evidence one was a smudged fingerprint. So there was the chance of the fingerprint matching the suspect or just seeming to match um, a random person. Evidence one B, there's the second part of the evidence was um, a footprint of size 12 and suspect X had size 12 footprint so it matched and the probability um, of matching just some random person of the thousand suspects was, um, was lower. Um, and similarly, uh, uh, evidence 2A was a partial DNA profile, you know, from whatever left on the hair, left at the site, and, and 2B was, uh, again, uh, another footprint. It keeps coming through the soft earth of the flower bed, apparently. Um, and the random match probabilities for the partial evidence are respectively 1A is 0 0.002, um, the other two are 0 0.001 and 2A is 0 0.003. So now we want to do the same exercise. We want to um, build a, a, a network in the right causal structure which will um, do the computation for us so that we'll be able to enter the fact that we do have the evidence and we'll be able to find out how the probability moves when we enter the evidence. <coughs> But we'll do it more methodically this time. So instead of doing the whole graph, um, I'll just briefly, if you can discuss what variable, in fact, do it. I mean, build the variables, put the variables on the screen. But I want to know what variables you want for this, this version of the problem. OK? The time starts now. OK. Um, so what variables did we have? How many? How many do you have? Four plus guilty. OK. Five. We just replaced one A one evidence one with one A and one B and evidence two with two A and two B. Okay, good. So you had five. Um, and you? Yeah, uh, five initially, and then we were trying to figure out how to get get it with three. Oh, you're trying to trying to reduce it. Yep. Okay. We got four. Four. Four, which were. Uh, suspect. Yes. One A. One two. B. Yes. And two A. And two A. So tell me, why did you put? Um, why did you have? Th why did you not represent the the one you had? You had you had one. So there's four. There's four items. So you you rep but, but you only had three. So you had you had one A. Yeah. You had two A, and you combined one B and two B. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So tell me. So tell so tell me why did you do that? Uh, because Probably there is a probability there is a match of the two footprints, so it's kind of cross. The thing. same thing. Yes, kind of a cross thing. And it's given as a probability there. Actually, we just use the few probability we were given. Yes. So, so artic articulate that a bit, a bit, a bit more. What, 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 what do you mean by uh, there's a cross? Yeah. There is an intersection of evidence. Which by which you mean? Sorry. So, sorry, but I'm not. F I, I mean, I think I know what you mean, but you need to in order to explain to these guys, or you know, to explain to a jury, why you would only have one then you'll need to be able to 
clearly say why are you are not representing the two pieces of evidence. What if I'm a jury member or, or the, the, uh, the prosecution and I say, oh, look, there's two pieces of evidence, there's two physical footprints, they should be there. The person didn't change their foot size between the two. And, and therefore what? And therefore what? So granted, granted they didn't change their foot size between the two crimes, what? Why can't I have the two footprints separately? They're two separate footprints. They're exposed, but they kind of correlated. Kind of correlated. Good thought. So let's, how did, what did you have? We didn't run the two footprints. No, you say, you, I, I asked you already, sorry, you had five. Uh, and you? Still working. Okay, no worries. Let us, let us, now here's the thing. Um, we'll come back to your model and we'll see what we want to say about that later. Let's, let's, let's go with the more popular model, because that is the more popular model. And remembering that, um, I'm not saying that model is wrong, because remember there can be more than one correct model of the situation. It depends on the degree of abstraction, you know. The, but what we do know, and what might motivate you to have, to have this sort of, I sense, more concrete model, is that there were physically two different footprints. I mean, there was a footprint in the flower bed at crime A, there was a footprint in the flower bed. So if, you, if, you're not, if you're trying not to confuse the jury at this stage, right, then you might represent things at a very concrete level. So there's, a, there's, a, there's an argument that you, you maybe stick to this very concrete level and have two. Okay, so we've agreed on that. So we've got, um, I don't know if you've already built it, but we're going to have the, the, um, the uh, um, suspect X is guilty and four children. Were, you, were any of you tempted to actually represent the two crimes separately? Like crime one, crime two? So that was, was, was that a two level structure? So you had, you had guilt, you had, you had, did, yeah. 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 But then they had the evidence. So you could. Yeah. 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 So you could. Um, I mean, particularly if you were concerned that suspect X might have committed only one crime, then you might actually separate them into two crimes and have the two bits of evidence hanging off the two crimes and blah blah blah. But we are told from the start. That's right. So. Um, so again, there are different ways to model it. Um, you know. Uh, and, and notice what's going on there, actually, because because we're told that the two crimes were committed by the same person, um, that assumption is, is used in simplifying the model. It's it's, it's because so, so in a way that assumption is important, but it's not represented. But it's it's a, it's in the back of your mind when you actually make the model. I don't need to represent that. Now you should get the same answer even if you did. Like if you, if you model it correctly, you should still get the same answer. But you can simplify by using an insight such as yours, right? You don't have to have, but we'll, we'll show that you don't have to have in a sec. Okay, so um, what are we up to? So those are our arrows. Double check, um, in fact. So this, is a, this, so this this is important. Listen up, listen up, listen up, listen up, listen up, shh, listen. <laughs> this is very important. We've represented the primary arrows that we want in the four um, model. Are there any cross connections that we haven't thought about that we've missed? And by cross connections, I mean, um, you know, think about are, there, are any of these things, would the result of one thing influence what the result of, of another thing was? Footprint one and footprint Okay, and why would footprint one and footprint two not be independent? For the reason identified earlier. Because if the suspect is the same person at both crimes, which we know. No, go ahead, Jeff. Just, just because there are two footprints, it doesn't mean they were made by the same person. Even if the same person committed both burglaries, it could have been the owner of the house. Correct. Been the very side, side of the that's right. That's correct. But but if um, uh, in the case where that's correct. But in the in the in the case where um, we're looking at uh, suspect X being guilty, which will be one of the one of the it's, so that will be a parent assumption when we're entering the probabilities. So when suspect X is guilty, the probability of a match will be one. Um, and then also the probability of a match for footprint two will be one. 
when suspect act, maybe we should just get to the, the probabilities. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll raise that as a question and we'll leave it. And, and now we'll, we'll just get to the probabilities. Well, the other thing is, yeah. I know we were told in the question that the suspect, the same person. The perpetrator was the same in both cases. Yes, the perpetrator was the same, that's right. In real life, you wouldn't know that when you're building this network. Yes. So, so in the more. In the, in the, in the more correlation between footprint one, footprint uh, necessarily. Ah, but you've got to answer the problem given. Well, and the problem true. given. In, in, as this is, as I said, a staged problem. So, in fact, uh, in the more, more complicated problem um, situation, then you do separate those that out and don't assume it. But we're kind of looking at simple versions to illustrate some of the uh, lessons, you know, that you get from modelling. So, um, anyway, let's go back up and into some numbers. So, suspect X is guilty. Um, numbers? It's just the one in a thousand thing. One in a thousand. Yep, as before. So, point zero zero one and point nine nine. Yep. Okay, yep. Um, fingerprint match. So now we remember these will be conditional. So suspect X is guilty. Probability of a fingerprint match is? Actually, search space can be reduced by f uh, footprint because uh, people, those people that have a foot size 12 can be selected as suspected. Then the uh, search space reduces, then, you know. Uh, Two of the concepts can be uh, yep. removed. Then we have three. Sure, but let's go with the numbers that we got from the problem, which I think s which should slide in pretty easily. So, um, suspect X is guilty. Uh, if they're guilty, what's the probability of a fingerprint match? Yeah. What was the question? If they are guilty, so this is the, the so so you have to when you're filling in these tables, you have to be very careful. You have to look at what what the cell means. So the cell means Steve. Oh no, just the cell. So it's if suspect X is guilty, what is the probability that the fingerprint will match? One. 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 Good. So if you read it carefully, then you. you but one sometimes, zero. yeah. So that's one and zero. If suspect X is not guilty, what is the probability that the fingerprint will match? Point whatever it was. Point whatever it was. Uh, I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, we don't. We don't have. Oh, yes. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't sort of. Do, I didn't. I didn't do. A, I didn't do a separate round. Actually, I could have done. I could have done a separate round. Yeah, I could. I could actually have done a separate round where I got you to answer that question individually and then came back and whatever. But I'll, we'll just go with the flow here. So, so, um, uh, yeah. So now it's um, point zero two, right? And so on with the other numbers, right? So um, that that will be. The same sort of thing. Footprint one. Zero one. Yep. Zero one. Let's go with this and press the excitement button. <laughs> All right. So um, initially, initially, remember it's uh, 0 0.99 and point zero zero one. And what are we doing? Anyway, so now we want to enter the evidence. So this was the the top at the top. We have the prior probability of guilt before any evidence. One in a thousand. Um, so, let's, so let's say the fingerprint matched, the footprint matched, footprint one matched, the DNA profile matched, yes. The footprint two matched, yes. And we get 100.006, which was exactly the number that we had last time. Is that correct? Is that correct? Is that the right answer? Is that the true probability that the suspect is guilty? No, you've got a different answer. These guys got a different answer. Why would they get a different answer? Right. So, so, the, so the point is that you know, don't be blinded by science. Like you've got a very precise number, but if you've entered the wrong model structure or the wrong parameters, then you've got a very precise, what's the phrase? 
<laughs> BS in, BS out, right? So, so if, you, if you haven't entered the right stuff. So, so the question is, I'm not questioning the numbers that you've put in, but suppose suspect X um, is guilty. Suppose that's true. The probability that footprint one will match is one, and the probability that footprint two will match is one. Okay. Now, suppose suspect X is not guilty. The probability that footprint one will match is uh, 0 0.00, 000, whatever it was. Was it one in a hundred thousand? One in a hundred? One in a hundred, let's say. And the probability that footprint two will, yes? Well, if you uh, add another concept of matching footprint one and footprint two. Yes, so we could add another node. But let, but let, let me see if, I, if, we, if, we, if this point becomes clear. If suspect X is not guilty and we get a random match on footprint one, will we also get a random match on footprint two? Yeah. Why? Because, I mean, if, if you're matching the foot size, yes. then by definition, it's the same foot size. And it's the same person at both no, crimes, no, even if they're not the... No, the, the, the so we're told the same person committed both crimes. It's either suspect X or it's some other person that committed both crimes. Mm -hmm. So they have to the same. So it means that yes. both crimes are committed by one person? Correct. Whether it's X or someone else. It's, it's just one person. So if footprint, if, if it's not X and footprint one matches, will footprint two match? Yeah. Why? Because the same person committed. It's the same person. They have what foot size? 12, yeah. it's the same right? Test. So it's the same test. Yeah. Okay. So the, the result of footprint two is just not independent of footprint one. Yeah. You'll always get the same answer. You'll get the same answer when suspect X is guilty. You'll get the same answer when suspect X is not guilty. Yeah. You can just about throw away the second node if you want, mm. right? Because it's not giving you extra information. And if you do count it as extra information, it's like counting the same thing again and again and again. It's like, oh, I read in the paper that, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that uh, um, n missiles have been um, launched on uh, Syria, and I think, oh, that, that, that can't be true. That's really unlikely. No, I'll give that an 80% probability. It's only, it's only the age. I don't really trust it. And then someone says, but look, look at this copy of the age. It also <laughs> says that missile, oh, well, I better upgrade my, oh, look, another copy of the age. Oh, my God, it's, <laughs> my probability is now 0.99 because of all these copies of the age I looked at. Of course, that's not right, but that's exactly what we're doing here, but we didn't realise we were doing it. So it's very important to think about um, the dependence of the variables, um, not the main one that you, know, you, you got that was the reason you put the variable there, but the possible connections between them, if they're, if they're strong. I mean, if they're really weak, it's not going to matter. But. So uh, one thing we could do is just delete footprint two. One thing we could do is we could have had a model that just had, and the footprints match, right, but which was implicitly recognising that point from the start. And one thing we could do is put an arrow between footprint one and footprint two, now, it's, it, 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 it's, it's a little bit suspect from a causal point of view because you're, it's, it's not actually the match of footprint one that causes the match of footprint two. But it is possible to have other kinds of arrows in here, sort of logical arrows. Um, so they're not causal, they're actually just logical, they're just probabilistic dependence arrows. So, um, so we can, and it's kind of technically, it's a mixed graph now because we, some of the arrows are causal and some are not. And if you really wanted to get technical, you could label a C were the ones that were causal and not, you know, an S for semantic for the other ones or something like that. But um, so when we, when we now change, so now footprint two has two parents. Um, and uh, if the suspect is, uh, should it be four? Is there four values now? Um, make our table bigger. There we go. So if, if suspect X is guilty um, and footprint one matches, will it be a match? Yes. If suspect X is guilty and there's no match, Will it be a match? No. Nope. It'll, in fact, it'll be probability one. There'll be no match. So it's like an identity. Yep. So that should be zero and one the other way around. Yep. Um, if suspect one, X one, is one. not guilty and there's a match, will there be a match? Yes. Yes. One zero. If if suspect is not guilty and there's no match, will there be a match? No. So zero one. Okay. So now we've entered in what it really is, and now look what happens. Um, well, look in various scenarios, but you can enter match for footprint one and see what happens to footprint two, just to check that we've got the right thing going on. Yes, okay, so 100, 100, zero, zero. They're in lockstep now. So now let's enter all the evidence, foot, fingerprint, footprint one, footprint two, and DNA profile. 
and the probability is different than it was before. Before it was only a half percent of them being um, innocent, and now it's 0.6. It it's half a percent now. Uh, yeah, sorry, so what was it before? It's because of that percentage probability thing of like a yeah. 6 in 10,000. Yeah, 6 in 10,000. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, so, so it was, uh, it was, anyway, it was much, it was much higher, we were much more confident before, and now we've got a, a, a point, so like about roughly half a percent probability that they're innocent. Yeah, so it's 100 in 200. Yeah, so you, so you might, and you might say, um, uh, well, so, so suppose someone says, oh, it's close enough. Like, Point, point 0.994, close enough. Close enough to 100. What difference does it make? All happy with that? No. I mean, it's only like a half a percent difference between the two cases. One in 200 awesome physics, right? Mm. <laughs> Especially if you're going to hang them. Mm. So you're going to hang them. You're going to hang them, but there's one, there's one in 200 chance that they're innocent. It's maybe feeling a bit um, un unhappy. But also, look, how do you describe the difference in the probability in between the two cases? Like, like... It would seem to me that in the first case we were assuming we had more of them from you. Yes, certainly, certainly. But even if I had to report the numbers, is it, is it, is it the right way for me to say there is a half a percent difference? Is that, is that the only way I could do it? There's a half a percent difference. What's that? It's not the same model, yeah, but no, one model, one model gets 99.4, the other model got sort of 99.9, .9, yeah, right? Not the same amount of evidence. No, that's correct, that's correct. But, it, but if, I'm, if, 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 if I'm saying, if I'm saying, look, your model is wrong because it says 99.9 .9 and I'm, my model is right and it says 99.4 and someone says, ah, half a percent, whatever. I mean, is, is half a percent, what I'm saying is the absolute difference, is that necessarily the right way to report the difference between the models? I mean, what other ways are there? Sensitivity. Sure, yep, sensitivity. I mean, what's the ratio of the probability of innocence? All right, in one case it was 0 0.1, and in the other case it's 0 0.6. We just multiplied the probability. It, it's six times as likely to be innocent on the second model. Sorry? 100, sorry, whatever it is, 100 times. So don't, so this is, this is, this is actually, uh, where's the question statement? Uh, okay, so the second one said, what is the probability of suspect X is guilty? The first one said, what is the value of discovering a match? What is the value, the value, what value is that? Is that the absolute difference? Is that the ratio of the two? Is that something else? Right, so, so the way that you measure the differences in probability is not um, a given. So you can do it relatively with a ratio, you can do it with information theory, you can do it with um, absolute differences. And in different contexts, some diff different ways of measuring will be appropriate. Um, so, right. So, so if you hooked it up to in the correct way to a um, utility uh, nodes and decision, then then that would that would give you the kind of probability maximize the utility maximizing decision. Um, but but if you if you're just kind of looking at in the abstract at at the probability difference, it's not clear how to how to report that in in an appropriate way. Um, and and Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's just that's yet another wrinkle on on on, on modeling and you know things that happen with modeling and, and right, in this issues. Case, though, would you be terribly concerned? Like a hundred times not very much is still not very much, right? Yes. Um, there's a, a really um, this is an interesting question, and I'd, I'll have to sort of de adjourn that that discussion. But the, there's this the question of how much evidence should be sufficient um, for guilt in a criminal. Um, trial is uh, hotly debated. So it, while I'm in the UK in a, um, about three weeks' time, I'll head along to a um, conference called Reasonable Doubt, well, and, and there'll be a discussion. A lot of people are arguing for different positions there about what constitutes reasonable doubt probabilistically. Is it is it more than just probability? Um, you know what, what, what goes on, um, and and bearing in mind that in a in a way, in a lot of these cases, people are quite spoiled because they have. Um, DNA evidence and DNA evidence probabilistically can be super powerful and in fact there's this known sort of way of categorizing DNA evidence as I forget what it is class A evidence B or C or whatever it is but the point is that that the top level of strength for DNA evidence is one in a million or two million or ten million or so something very very strong 
And so, um, you know, in a way, judges and juries are a bit spoiled by that. So if you start looking at, um, you know, uh, what was that, one in 200, right, that, that, that pales into insignificance compared to, compared to some of these DNA figures that they grapple with. I have one question. Like if DNA, um, partial DNA result is available, mm. so why we can't skip all other evidences? Just focus on that one, and if the DNA matches, that's, the person is guilty. Indeed. Again, I'm going to have to. Again, I'm going to have to adjourn that question. Um, there's a thing called the prosecutor's fallacy, which is relevant here. Um, there's uh, there's the security of the conviction, which means like the error that there might be in the estimate, um, and and other things that they will discuss at the reasonable doubt conference. So. Um, there's the, that opens a whole can of worms, and we can certainly discuss that some other time. But it's 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 sort of way. There are so many issues there that it's way beyond today. But I hope that you enjoyed the exercise and that and got some insight into roughly what we're trying to do with the software. Um, it's it's a kind of ex, it's kind of like that, and we have to try to get people to train them enough and build the software so that it's uh, smart enough to discourage people from making the kinds of errors that are very easy to make. Right, errors like not putting the, the arc between the footprints very easy to make. So we need to, yeah. I think that when we did this exercise, we almost tripped up on both of those you know, common issues with yeah. the causal direction in the first part and also not linking footprints. There. Exactly right. Yeah. It's only for experience where we kind of recognise that those were there. Yeah. So it is tricky. Yeah. So an expert modelers can get it wrong initially and then realise they've made a mistake and want need to need to change it. If you're not expert, it's quite easy to get it wrong and not realise. So earlier in the day we talked about choosing our random nodes. Yes. If they're correlated, are they still random? Uh, not as random. So relative to each other. So one in the case of the footprints, given one, the other one is not random at all. No, so the conditional the probability. Um, but if you aren't given one, then each each of them right is unknown. Each of them there's a probability that each of them is true if you don't know what the other one is. So it's the conditional probability. Right, well, that's how the randomness disappears, but the yeah. unconditional probabilities, there's yeah. still randomness, yeah. We're building a cause in there, right? Mm, yeah. Are the ones at the end of the arrow ever random? So uh, the word random doesn't necessarily mean... Um, but a random variable is one that you stay in it. Yeah, so there's a difference... Random phenomena, right? Well, there's a difference between... As, 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 Stephen, is, as Stephen is oh, saying, so, so sometimes people think the word random means uh, completely independent of everything else. Whereas, whereas actually statistically, it, it, you can think of it as there's some aspect of it which is, which is, which is kind of um, not determined by uh, whatever, the information that you have, let's say. I thought a random so variable was defined as a variable whose state was the result of random phenomena. Um, but what's that mean? So, so I, mean, I mean, basically, um, if, you, if, you can rep if you can represent, um, in practice, there's a lot of unknowns, a lot of things we don't know. So, um, you know, if we knew everything and we had every variable in the universe and then it might be that we, I don't think it is true, but if we lived in a deterministic universe, then there'd all be zeros and ones and if we enter, just entered in the top row correctly, blip, we'd know everything that would ever happen. But, but, but um, even if it were true that we're in a deterministic universe, um, we don't know all that stuff. So, so probabilities become a way of sort of summarising the fact that we don't know, but we know enough to think it's, you know, more likely this than it is that. So. Um, you know, true randomness uh, in the sense of quantum randomness, let's say, um, is probably pretty rare. I mean, apart from the quantum phenomena, but 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 we can still use models a lot to represent situations of ignorance, basically. Sorry, another question. Oh no no, okay, just just holding your pen up. All right, thanks very much for participating, and I guess that's it for today. Is there any questions or anything, or any other discussion? You have any other questions? No, I have a question. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, if there could be a footprint of size uh, 30 is not 12, then this, that does 1B and 2B still uh, even as usual? Okay, so um, anyone like to uh, answer that question? If the second, if the second test is, um, shows, that if the second test showed that there was a footprint of size 13, would we use the same model, let's say, that we decided on? With the link between the two. It certainly wouldn't be correlated. No. Was no. It size, it no. Be would, there would be two criminals. Why? Because no. the foot size is different. But one could be the so it, it can't be possible that one person knew.
Correct. And we did the same graph. Right. So then the model would be contrary to one of the assumptions. Mm -hmm. And we'd the have to... The question is, did he actually ever say that the perpetrator left the footprint? Just said there were footprints there. There were footprints there. Um, I hope that... He said it was evidence, but didn't say the perpetrator left the footprint. Yes. So... Um, the offender, the offender matches with certainty is said in the first version of the problem, and then when you, then, and then, uh, I'm not saying these problems have been perfectly worded. I mean, this, this. So, um, the, the, the intention was that you would continue to assume that through the second version, which is in which the evidence one is actually broken down into a couple of things, and evidence two is broken down into a couple of things. Um, right, in fact, I think the, the point of this is that first part of the question isn't doesn't have all the information that we need. We're told about these two separate um, evidences. We're mm. not told about the fact that there is that overlap until we break it down. Yeah, right. that's right. That's right. So the, the point is that you need to ask these other questions. Mm. Is that true? Mm. Okay. What's that? Because we know in the first one there are footprints. No, in the first, in the, in the first, in the first version. No footprints or anything like that. But you guys, you guys, you guys addressed it yeah. when you talked about, yeah. about yeah. where those two yeah. footprints yeah. were in yeah. the yeah. So if, if that first one is actually referring to the same situation that we get in more detail in the second version, mm -hmm. right, then the first one, your calculation was incorrect mm -hmm. because they didn't explain that evidence one and evidence two were, were overlapped, correlated, because specifically they both included the same footprint mm -hmm. um, test. Well, though, I should point out, these guys actually did come up and ask that question. Cool. And then we just kind of said, well, given that the question, that they didn't tell us that they're, they're correlated. We, Good. We presume. Good. Not. Good. Yeah, that's that's exactly the right question to ask, right? Yeah. Yeah. There, sorry, maybe this is for afterwards. Yeah. But is, is there a way to tease out this sort of um, the, these deficiencies? Because you know, you, you make a base in it where that's just a model mm. of, of what you're doing. Yeah. Um, is there some? Sorry, I need to think no, no, no. It's an excellent question. So, so um, as a rule, um, if you as you get more fine grained and more concrete and you're putting in more detail, you, it's more painstaking because you have to put in more variables and whatever. Um, and you may not have the probabilities that you need to fill in all these sub-variables. But you can sometimes avoid these problems. And let's, let's take this case. So by going from the first um, description to the second, we got more fine-grained and broke up what the evidence was. And it became at least, at least we had a, like a 50-50 shot of spotting the fact that there was this dependence between the two items of evidence because we'd broken it down a bit more concrete. Now, I mean, I can imagine, um, I have never, haven't done it, but I can imagine trying to break down this situation even more so that it becomes brutally obvious that, that, that footprint one is going to match when footprint two does. Yeah? I mean, it, I mean that, that can happen. And, and later on in this problem, um, there's some other evidence. And um, we had this intuition expert intuition that the evidence was irrelevant. But it's pretty hard to articulate why it was irrelevant. So we said, let's just build it. Right, let's, just, let's just build the causal structure. We'll enter the evidence. We'll just see if it makes any difference. Because it was easier to build it and to, not, and to put the right probabilities in and enter it. And lo and behold, it was irrelevant. It's quite hard to kind of articulate sometimes why that is. But if you have a Particularly if you have a pretty concrete low-level model, then, then it will tell you what you need to know. It, and you can be confident that all the parts are right. You know. and then the question is, can you <coughs> explain that? Um, that's your job. <laughs> Explaining the model. Other questions? Nope. Well, it's five to five, so...